we eventually divide by the derivative, right? Because yeah. x squared, would we would be dividing by 4, mm -hmm. and we'd end up with a sine of x squared plus 10 in our problem plus some u stuff. We have to think of, if we're going to choose this, that will, we have to be able to get rid of the other x stuff. Because our integral can only be in terms of u. So the 4x would not get rid of this stuff. But this would get rid of the 4x. Intuition. <laughs> so that's the only the second example. Why don't you try this and see if you can figure out what your u should be. If we choose u as our tangent x, then du dx equals secant squared x. Solving for dx, that is du over secant squared x. I got that. Rewriting our integral, it's u oh, yes. secant squared x dx, which is du over secant squared x. Okay, I got that. gone. So we have integral of u du. Uh, until the end, I will, yeah. So antiderivative of u is one half u squared. Oh, how did you? Oh, oh. Did you do that by changing it into? Um, <laughs> yeah. So do you see the value in u substitution when we end up with an integral of u? That's a whole lot better than that, right? So our objective is to write, rewrite the integral in terms that we know the antiderivative. So one half u squared. So it's one half tangent squared x, and we're going to evaluate it from zero to pi which is our dumb boundaries of integration because tangent of pi is zero. Tangent of zero is zero. You chose we get zero minus zero, which is zero. Isn't that fun? Yeah. <laughs> I could have just used my calculator. Watch what I did here. No, now it's a completely different one. Yeah. Do a square root one. We want to do a square root one. Okay, no, so some students will look and they say, okay, you substitution. Now I've got these numbers out here. Nothing changes. You're just trying to find the antiderivative. Then you evaluate the antiderivative as we normally do. I'm not going to finish that. Wait, um, how did you get the integral of u du to one half u squared? Bad. Like the antiderivative of x to one half x squared. So once you get an indeterminate, once you put u back in, you have to take the antiderivative of that. Right, that's and when you do it. Don't, yeah, so a lot of people will go like this and like, oh, I know what u is, and I make it tangent, and then you, you're going the wrong way. We worked here to get to this, now that's when you find the antiderivative. Okay. Why you love an 11. This is the button. What? You have an 11. <laughs> you turn older when the minutes change. Alright, so evaluating the antiderivative or integral of cotangent of x. But why do we keep on doing these? Like, are these the it's only kind of problems? problems? No, we just. You just, you just do square root 1. Square root 1. Square root. So, and I think let's choose x. Yeah. Okay. All right, Mr. Winkler. Eight. <laughs> what's our u? X cubed X plus one. X cubed plus one. What's the derivative of x cubed plus one? I don't know. Three x. It's a quadratic, so we're gonna undo that x squared out front. So you're. Make that nine instead of eight. Yeah, then it, then it That'd be really nice. I can't change a three easily well, to a nine. No, but you could just erase the lower bout, the lower left bout. Or just erase the And then it becomes a nine. I can calculate it. Seriously, can I Then it's solved. Dx is du over three x squared. So the x squared disappear. I get an eight thirds. Yes, you can. Integral have natural eight. log of u du. We don't know the antiderivative of natural log of u. And so 6.3 is that? Why'd you do this problem then? No, isn't that 1 over 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 
understand. Well, well once right? you get to this point, you should have an ant, uh, expression that you know the antiderivative. This one, you just don't know until you learn integration by parts. But that's u substitution. Here's another u substitution. We don't know what our u is here. Okay? We shouldn't choose u as x. That doesn't really get us anywhere. Cotangent? How can I rewrite cotangent? One over tangent. One over tangent. Or cosine over sine. Which one do you want to try? Cosine over sine. I agree. Cosine x over sine x dx. So now we have options for our u. We could either choose cosine x or sine x. And we know the derivative of them are the opposite, so it's going to undo something. So let's try cosine x, even though that is the wrong choice. So du dx equals negative sine x, dx equals du over negative sine x. So we get u over sine x, du over negative sine x. Do you see that we chose the wrong thing? Yes. It didn't get rid of our x stuff. We have u's and x's. We did something wrong. Okay? So that is not the right choice for u. We're going to choose the bottom, which is sine x. So it's the integral of cosine x over u, and dx is du over cosine x, look at that, it's the antiderivative of 1 over u du. What's that? Oh. For the antiderivative of 1 over u, natural log absolute value of u. Can you explain why it's absolute value? No. Okay. Natural log <laughs> value of u I'm wondering that for two days. is yeah. sine x plus c. Because you can't take the absolute, you can't do the natural log of a negative. How do you know this? Okay. I'm trying to help, I'm trying to get my calculator. So I think in your assignment you will have tangent. Remember tangent is um, sine over cosine. So choose the bottom one. So in tangent you would choose cosine. For cotangent choose sine. Choose the bottom one, you'll get the right answer. Okay. There's more to this section. Uh, we have to solve differential equations by separation of variables. I will not talk about that today. Stay tuned, we'll do it again tomorrow. Thank you. Awesome. Peace out.